further ado, um, let's welcome today's presenters. You are all in for a treat. We have marketing automation experts ready to show you act on in action. We have Bob Garcia, Director of Product Marketing and Annie Porter, Senior Director of Solution Consultants. Um, Bob, Andy, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you'll be covering today. Hey, thank you so much, Kelsey. Um, I'm Bob Garcia, and I head up product marketing for Acton. I've been with the company just over a year. Um, super excited to share uh, insights about marketing automation and uh, and the benefits of Acton's unique approach to delivering a compelling, simple, and complete marketing automation platform. I'm joined by Andy Porter, who will, uh, you want to introduce yourself now, Andy? Yeah, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I'm, I'm Andy Porter. I'm the Director of Solutions Consultants here at Acton. Been with the company uh, 11 times as long as Bob. Uh, not very long that I'm going to be able to say something like that, but I uh, wanted to take advantage. Uh, definitely seen a lot of different ways that people have used the platform and excited to show some of the things that uh, have kept me here for 11 years. All right, Bob, I'll let you take it away here. You've got. Oh, Bob, I think you're cutting out. Yeah, during the, the practice, we did notice that Bob had yeah. some robot tendencies. So, um, yeah, you, Bob may want to kill the, the, the camera for the, the presentation portion here. How is that working? Is that better? Much better. Okay, thanks. Well, you're, uh, there's a couple of internet old timers here joining the uh, the presentation here with me, with me and Andy. My first uh, commercial email was sent back in 1997, and that was just through text mail. But I'm excited to talk about modern technologies and how marketing automation is delivering scale and efficiency and value for marketers. Can you hear me okay, Kelsey? Yep. Yep, sound great. Perfect. So what's the plan? So we're gonna I'm gonna give you a, an overview of marketing automation. Um, it's our point of view, and I think you're gonna find some some interesting insights about how it can be applied to the entire customer lifecycle. Then we're gonna pivot over to a product demo that Andy's gonna lead, and then we're gonna close with uh, what is unique about Acton and uh, how we support our customers. So let me just jump right in. So why marketing automation? because uninformed engagement is equals lackluster conversions. So we're all there today, interacting with the web, dealing with brands that do a good job with personalization and paying attention to your interests and your goals. And you also deal with brands that do a poor job of that. And more often than not, you know, customers are resonating with and connecting with and buying from brands that actually do personalization. So marketing automation is here to help you scale you know, your personalization and marketing efforts to move away from batch and blast email, which is becoming less and less welcome and causing more and more problems for organizations to get into you know, a recipient's email inbox. Another challenge with you know, not doing marketing automation, leveraging a technology like act on is that you develop, you know, no insights, no real insights that tie back to revenue. You know, you may get some vanity metrics around opens, clicks, and sends, but you're not going to get in an understanding of what's working and how it's impacting your sales funnel. And then lastly, uh, and really importantly, is sales insights. So one of the great things about marketing automation is it really does bridge marketing and sales. It does provide marketers with the opportunity to actually serve up hot leads and prospects, you know, with their sales peers and also provide some insights into those consumers and their behaviors. And, um, and it's, it's definitely making a difference in building more harmony between sales and marketing. Here at Acton, we've actually reorganized our sales and marketing teams under what we call the revenue team. Uh, because it's really two sides of the same coin, sales and marketing. And then, you know, in the end, marketing automation helps to scale and deliver dynamic and personalized relevant content. So you're able to put programs in place that meet the customer with where they're at in their buyer journey. So based on their 
interest based on their level of engagement, you know, based on how long they've been, you know, working with your organization. And that's really key to nurturing leads to ensure that they move along the continuum of education to create that preference for your products and services and understanding to hand them off to sales as a qualified leads. And this all happens at scale. So in terms of a simple way to represent the, the value that uh, marketing automation provides and its efficiency in terms of driving scalable growth, you know, it's really there to satisfy customer expectations while, you know, driving efficiency for your marketing organization. You know, we're all being asked to do more with less and it's putting a lot of stress on the marketing teams. And you really need to look at your solutions critically that enable your, your workflows and, and your engagement with your consumers and, 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 you know, and prospects. And solutions like ACTO are uniquely built to minimize complexity uh, while maximizing the capabilities you know, that you need to deliver meaningful, personalized, and dynamic engagements. And this results in increasing your lead volumes, makes for happier sales partners, and drives more return on investment. a step forward in the product demo Bob you're cutting out again it should interact with your your customers Andy you want to pick this one up yeah sure I'll, I'll, I'll jump in here um, so as we're looking at, at the actual marketing automation scheme, um, as Bob was mentioning um, we're, we're starting from everything from your website all the way through the, the sales engagement. And that's really the one of the keys that I think people forget with marketing automation. It's not just that top of the funnel sort of uh, engagement, but it involves the site visits and tracking, getting your customer and prospect data, um, using that data to actually target the right audiences. And a lot of that is going to require connections to other systems. And that's one of the areas where um, if you have the right marketing automation system, you can bring that data in as behavioral data. You can bring that in to leverage data coming from a number of different sources versus relying solely on what the uh, automation system can handle. So that a lot of that will, will go into how you're actually targeting the audience. And that way that you can start to automate communications both internally and externally uh, to make sure that the right people are getting the, the right messages when they need to. So externally, people based on their engagement are, are getting personalized communications. And based on that engagement, your internal audience is also getting communications to, to make sure that they're following up appropriately. If somebody requests a quote, you want to make sure that somebody internally actually gets that quote request. And then making sure that you're measuring everything along the way in order to look back and optimize the engagements that, that you have, the, the efforts that, that you're doing here, uh, to make sure that you're not just doing a one-to-one -one sort of communication and using vanity metrics to prove your effectiveness, uh, but that you're actually tying it in, as Bob mentioned, to the, the revenue, to the, the overall company and business goals, to make sure that you're actually driving towards things that will make you look better from a marketing perspective, but also make your marketing overall if more effective, more efficient, and more valuable to your company. Bob, I don't know if there's anything else there you wanted to add in, if you can. No, it's just, it's just really important to think about marketing automation holistically in terms of all the different areas of your, you know, your marketing efforts that it could be used to uh, deliver value for. So thanks for that great summary, um, Andy. And I think one thing to keep in mind with marketing automation is, is again, I, I mentioned it's very often thought of as that top of the funnel sort of engagement, and, and it's so much more. You can do the same sort of motions that you would think about from a top of the funnel uh, engagement method, but apply that to bottom of the funnel, to customer acquisition or customer onboarding, uh, to moving your customers to more of a loyalty program. So I, I think often as people are dipping their toes in automation, um, as Bob's getting to here, uh, we think very much on that, that left 
teal area as opposed to the the blue and green or yellow uh, i'm not sure what we would classify that color off to the the right here but uh, bob i'll let you you take over from here i think it's chartreuse <laughs> good call <laughs> I like my colors. Um, yeah, so different verticals actually lean on marketing automation in different ways. Uh, you know, most of us are very focused on acquiring new prospects and customers and converting those into sales pipeline. But there's really a, an opportunity there to, you know, extend the value of marketing automation, to do more jobs for your business around continuing to drive engagement with your customers and driving cross sales, upsells, you know, to make sure they continue to be happy and you grow your business with your customers. And a great way to think about this is in the next slide, which we let's see if I can click here, where we've gone and, and captured 12 really popular, you know, quote unquote, use cases or business strategies um, that our customers are doing every day, you know, using Acton's marketing automation capabilities to support their business. So, you know, first and foremost, it's really capturing anonymous to known you know, users really, you know, the email address and developing that relationship and that per I think we lost you again. Reliance on first party. Sorry about that. So I'll, ju I'll jump in. As Bob mentioned, there, there's there's so much that, that goes into this. Um, as you mentioned, it, it's from that top of the funnel to the bottom that that just tracking the information. There, there's a lot of reliance on on cookies and, and technology to, to be able to do that. And um, I, I think I heard first party cookies versus third party cookies, which um, we can address it as well as we if that comes up as a question. But that's one of the keys as, as privacy, as security gets more um ingrained in organizations as um you're doing more that you have to have an awareness for um what sort of privacy laws are out there uh what sort of engagement that you're going to be allowed to do what sort of um what google's going to allow you to do as far as uh tracking is concerned and so all of this uh goes into what you're you're leveraging for that uh, that data process and and so as you're thinking about it you want to make sure that you're you're first of all set up technically for these these areas but um, also able to uh, engage on much more than uh, much more than just that hey we're converting that anonymous visitor to to the known visitor but adding value to to the uh, prospects to the customers that you have um, there are several channels that you can incorporate into your marketing automation um, like so uh, SMS or social media engagements. And a lot of those really are more of that customer experience level sort of communication versus a customer acquisition uh, communication. So really thinking of the different tones that you can use for each of these different stages, you can still use the same tools um, through marketing automation, but making sure that you're accounting for the different tone that you need to use, the different audience that you're targeting, um, and the message that you're trying to get across, as well as the outcome that you're trying to measure. So something like the engage uh, group with that, that keep section, that's really a different communication uh, than we're talking about for, say, the uh, the upsell um, or the scaling customer acquisition. But the tools that you're going to be using to execute that, they're all very similar. So, Bob, I don't know if there's anything that you wanted to add um, as our resident Decepticon today, uh, but uh, we, we can move to the next slide. Which is me. Excellent. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and stop sharing and uh, please let me know in the, the chat if I do start to come across as a Decepticon as well, um, because uh, I, I do have some of the similar Internet issues as uh, as Bob sometimes has. So uh, feel free to let me know. And hopefully you guys are seeing my screen with the um, act on contact report. Yep, looks good. Perfect. So what we're going to focus on today is. Um, talking through some of the key areas of the Act on platform. And as you can see, there's a lot that goes into the Act on platform. And Kelsey told me I was allowed to talk for about 20-ish minutes 
Um, so you will not get the four hour demo from me today, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the data that we will be collecting um, and what sort of information that um, you'll be able to leverage as you're targeting the audiences that you need to target. And we'll talk a little bit about that, that targeting process, including what we're doing to personalize the experience on the customer end. Um, then we'll hit on automation and reporting uh, towards the end of the, the demo process. So first and foremost, this contact report, which I gave you a sneak peek of, pre peek of uh, a moment ago, this is an overview of all of the data that we are collecting on the behavior of an individual. So you're seeing the email engagements, website engagements, search terms, media files, SMS messages, if you choose to use that, that channel, social um, automation that, that you have people in. One thing I do like to point out is this custom events section of this because this allows you to bring in things that are happening outside of the marketing automation platform into Act On and account for those as behaviors with a timestamp. So you're not treating it as another field that you have to add to your database. It's purely a behavior that's related. And this is a unique feature of, of Act On. And all of this information comes into the timeline. So you as a, a marketer are tracking all of this rich information on each individual to understand what sort of engagement they have, what sort of emails they, they're uh, looking at or, or receiving. And all of that is going to come down to the, the date, the timestamp, the specifics. Um, we can even drill into the, the specific page if we wanted to, to, to see the, the details. Now, as a marketer, you're probably not going to look at every penny Scott in the world. But one thing to, to point out here is this same contact report is available in all of our uh, CRM integrations, and we even have a tool called the CRM integration toolkit that allows you to add that to uh, even CRMs that we don't have a native integration to. So it, it's really expansive to, as Bob mentioned, try to help align that sales and marketing uh, function to where the sales team has better trust in the leads that you're sending over from a marketing perspective and better insight to actually execute on the, the sales process that will make those leads that you're spending so much effort getting into their hands actually close. Um, so everyone along the way is, is getting benefit from that, that insight. Now, as I mentioned, the marketers are not going to want to look at every penny Scott, and that's where the segmentation comes, uh, comes in. So as you can see here, we have a number of different criteria that we're using to target into a particular audience. In this case, we're looking at a decision maker title who's actually visited one of our product pages in the last 30 days. We can start to filter that down into the industries that we want to look for. Um, people who have an opportunity that's going to close in the next 30 days um, or is not going to close in the next 30 days. Um, you could do something uh, of that sort as well. Um, looking at the, the behavior score. So all of the behaviors that we we're looking at can be uh, generically scored as, hey, somebody visited a web page, or it can be scored more specifically as somebody went to our pricing page, uh, somebody went to this particular training page, or somebody went to our careers page, and I want to give them a negative score because that's somebody looking for a job, not looking to buy. So all of that information can be tied in here from a, a, an overall scoring perspective or from a segmentation perspective to where you're targeting people for your bulk communications or as part of the audit. Now, one thing I do like to, to highlight is any of these uh, segment criteria that you have, you can actually save as a, a query template and reuse later on. Um, so you have the ability to uh, very easily replicate processes. And um, I, again, if you're looking more at, hey, I want to look at people who actually closed in the last 30 days. Um, and, and we could say, hey, is is after 30 days ago here, and now I'm I'm more looking at uh, the the folks who are net new customers, and so I'm looking for more of an onboarding process versus an, an acquisition or a late stage funnel sort of uh, communication. Now, when we get into the actual um, messaging that you have there, uh, of course, we do have SMS as a channel and very similar functions that, that you're going to see here from uh, from the email. Uh, but I'm not going to go through the entire email composer. It is a drag and drop. It is automatically responsive. Uh, I really want to focus on these really weird looking sections of the, the message because this is where 
Acton allows you to enable a lot more personalization and customization to the way that you're actually communicating with the audience. So we have personalization based on the individual. We have it based on the organization and the type of organization. You see this, this image link. We're actually going to populate an image um, based on the type of organization that they're working with. And then down here at the bottom, this is our dynamic content, um, which is uh, another way of getting that personalization in at, at kind of a bulk level. If somebody's in, in the K-6 audience for this particular group or middle school or high school, um, we have the ability to, to personalize based on those, those particular audiences. And then as we get into the review step, you can actually see how this is, is, is going to, to work here. So we can look at um, John. He's working with middle school uh, children. So he's got middle school child as, as the uh, image here with content for the transition from elementary school um, into uh, middle school for Warner Academy with that different image at the bottom. Uh, whereas Sarah's getting details for elementary school children. So she's got the, the different content here, different uh, information, Marlon Samuels Elementary, and Morgan is working with independent learners. So she has details for the independent learning with the, the hands-in logo. So you can see that, as Bob mentioned, you could do all of this information, that personalized communication at scale by leveraging some of these tools to capitalize on all of that data that we are tracking on the individuals. Now to take that a step further, it's not just in the, the way that we're actually personalizing the message. One of the, the key elements of Acton is the ability to send in different ways. So obviously we can send um, immediately, schedule it, use the recipient's time zone. So we're not sending a message uh, at 6 a.m. Uh, Pacific time when we're trying to hit a 9 a.m. audience on the East Coast uh, where you don't have to try to figure out what is the magic hour that's going to work. We can say, hey, well, I want to send this out at 9 a.m. and that will hit each time zone respectively at 9 a.m. Um, you could do use a send over time if you needed to throttle your message. We're doing a large message that's out of the ordinary for uh, the type of bulk messaging that, that we've sent. Um, as well as being able to use my personal favorite, the adaptive send feature. Now you may have used or heard of send time optimization in the past, um, which is a way to optimize when you're sending the message based on email engagements, which is a really nice feature. The dirty secret of it is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because a majority of the communication engagement that you get happens within the first two hours of a message going out. So you're basically receiving, hey, we're sending out this message at about the right time because it's skewed towards the, the natural engagement that happens when sending out a, a message. Where Adaptive Send differs is it looks at all of that behavior that we looked at at the beginning of the, the uh, demo portion from the, the web page to the SMS to media, social media, those custom touch points, and identifies the day of the week and the hour of the day that each individual is most engaged with the brand. And what we've seen with customers leveraging it is about a 30% increase in the click-through rates when they use Adaptive Send versus when they don't use Adaptive Send. So it's not comparing different customers with, uh, uh, with each other. So you have this, this high range of variance. Um, it's within a single customer's engagement um, that they're seeing that, that sort of increase. So just leveraging that data, not only to personalize the communication, but to personalize when somebody's receiving the communication will help you with that engagement level, which, uh, again, as many of you who are might be interested in deliverability will note, that's the biggest key in actually delivering your messages into the inbox. Um, ISPs are looking less for using magic words in your email and more for how is your audience responding to the messages that you're sending? Um, and so the better engagement you have, the more trust you build with the ISPs. And if there is a misstep, the more likely you are to um, actually overcome that misstep versus automatically being thrown into spam for all eternity. Now, as we kind of shift from a single communication to a series of communication, that's where the automation comes in. And, and so we can see that uh, from a 
uh, an automation perspective, we have a number of different steps. In this case, I'm looking at just an early stage education process here where we're sending a targeted ebook. Now, in this ebook, we may be able to, to personalize based on persona. So we have different conditional variations of the message that are going to go out. We can also do an A B test if we wanted to, uh, to make sure that the right message is going out to these audiences. Um, but this is a way for you to have another layer of personalization beyond what we've already talked about. Wait a week. If somebody is not engaged, then we're going to send an alternate ebook. And you know, maybe we'll we'll incorporate SMS as part of the process and then move them over to the next step over here with the uh, value prop case study. Um, we'll wait a week. If they're engaged, then you know what? Maybe this is the time that we need to en engage with our sales uh, organization and incorporate them as part of the process. So we're going to assign a task in the CRM for a salesperson to follow up here. And as you can see, we can move through a lot of these different steps to, to communicate. Um, just to give you an idea of the steps that are available, this top section is really how we're going to communicate with the audience, sending emails, sending SMS messages, branching based on um, either opens and clicks, or this could be a combination of anything that we know about the, the individual based on things that are coming over from CRM, the behaviors that act on his tracking, a combination there of scores. Uh, so it could be, hey, we're just waiting for somebody to hit a score of 40, and then we're going to send an alert to our sales team. That could be part of how you are branching it and qualifying um, in this process. The second section is really how we're going to manage the actual customer record. So we can update records, we can um, move them around, we can send alerts based on what's happened with the, the records via email. Uh, we can use uh, an API connection to actually do a, a web post to another system. So maybe we want to do a direct mail piece, or maybe once somebody has qualified, we're going to add them over to um, some partner marketing or something uh, of that sort. Uh, and then tying into the CRM as well. This, this account is connected to Microsoft Dynamics. Um, so we have tasks in CRM, but you have similar functions for Zendesk Cell, for Sugar Cell, for uh, Salesforce CRM uh, as well. So you have all of these, these functions to incorporate the sales organization as part of the process. Um, internally, one thing that we did was add, based on a, an actual email that a salesperson sent out, we were able to um, actually incorporate um, a, a process of adding somebody to this automation and sending notifications or alerts on follow the processes that the salesperson uh, should do as um, part of uh, following the, the overall sales process. So we had, you know, two days later, uh, leave a voicemail. Three days after that, we'd send a uh, personalized email on behalf of the sales rep. And then a couple of days later, it was connect on social media and leave another voicemail or, or give another call. Um, if the person uh, doesn't uh, engage, then, hey, let's, let's go down this other path. So you can see how you can, as a marketing team, more closely align to what we want the outcomes of sales to, to be as well. So again, making sure that you're putting all of this effort to qualify um, records that were actually getting those records worked on in, in the most efficient manner um, and not losing any of the, the uh, hard work that we've done from a marketing team. Now, I do see a couple of questions in chat from a, a product standpoint. Um, so um, one question is, is there going to be a change in segmentation to, to look from days to hours? Um, at this point, if you want something more of an hourly based uh, engagement, um, the best thing to do is more trigger-based messaging um, based on somebody doing engagement uh, within a, a, a particular scheme. So um, typically with the, the syncs that we have with the engagements, you can have those wait steps built in for the, the hourly waits. Uh, but um, typically if you have that sort of communication where it needs to be more timely, um, trigger-based messaging versus um, time-based messaging is probably going to be your, your best method. 
Um, and then there's another question about Apple, um, the Apple privacy policy and, and really what they're doing. So this is something that we've actually put a lot of effort into and in, uh, on our um, Act on Connect, um, which is our knowledge base. We have a lot of uh, documentation on uh, deliverability, especially in working with, with Apple. So there are things that we do from a uh, tracking perspective that can recognize when things are coming over from, uh, from Apple. Um, but I, I, the, the follow-up question is, uh, do you still suggest using open email as a branch option? And honestly, I don't. Um, so we, we do have email not opened or clicked. I would, would typically lean towards uh, the email was not clicked uh, because that's an, an actual engagement. And, and a lot of times, as, as was mentioned in the, the, the questioning, there's a lot that, that comes up with the, uh, the the email, um, whether it's Apple or whether it's other uh, Barracuda or other filters, spam filters that, that go on there that may register as an open because it's downloading the images. Um, and so it's a less reliable um, metric that, that you're looking at. So um, for us, we have actually been talking about opens as a less valuable metric um, for eight years. Um, at, at this point. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're actually looking at more of the active engagements that, that folks are using. So you can use the opens to identify more so, is this a valid list? Is this a valid record that we have um, versus is this somebody who's engaged? Because again, a lot of times you have the preview pane if somebody's looking at their phone um, and scroll through their emails, delete the, the message above it, and then it automatically loads your message. Well, guess what? That's going to count as an open, even though that person may have just deleted your message immediately thereafter. Um, so again, focusing more on the clicks is going to be um, more key for you as, as far as identifying what is working and what is not working uh, from a, an, an actual email optimization perspective. Now, speaking of optimization, I, I will um, actually jump back into some reporting that we have here um, and, and talk to some of the reporting that you can start to leverage to optimize your communication. So starting from the, the actual content that you're running, you have the ability to see how are people engaging? How are people actually exiting or hitting the goal criteria from the, the paths that you have? What's happening within each step of the nurturing campaign to identify where are things working, where are things not working? So maybe you can optimize, pull different levers uh, to make things work better in your automation. And then even dialing into the email to see, okay, let's look at this first email that we have and to see what sort of engagement we're getting on this email and understand where are people most engaged. So a lot of people are actually going to our personalized link that we're putting into the, the message versus some of the other downloadables that we have in there. So good uh, key to identify that you know, the more personalized we get with these communications, the better engagement we're, we're tending to get. You can also see the device and client that you're receiving to identify what's working and what's not working, what your audience is actually consuming your content on. So if you have most people using mobile devices, then maybe you want to de design your content mobile first, desktop second. In this particular case, uh, still a lot of our audience is still looking at uh, things through a personal computer. So we still want to be mobile optimized, but we don't have to completely shift our approach. And then as we look at the reporting, getting details into what is working both from an actual content perspective. So something like the revenue attribution report will show you what content is actually driving revenue uh, based on first touch or multi-touch where you can weight different activities as more or less valuable and see, hey, the contact me request form is more valuable here than the, the homepage. We can see what sort of deals have actually closed and how much revenue has come in from those deals associated with this um, particular asset. Then you can zoom a little bit out to identify the revenue impact report, which is going to look more like the actual, um, more at the the actual types of communications or types of campaigns that you're running um, to look at what's generating new leads. So, hey, outbound emails generating a lot of leads, but you know what? We're actually getting more. Um, opportunities from surveys versus the the outbound email. And then we can even drill into what sort of pipeline is being generated by the actual campaign type, um, what sort of revenue and 
per campaign, what sort of uh, revenue should we expect? So it'll help you both forecast what you should expect when you go to create a new survey campaign and do some retrospective after the campaign runs to see, is there something that made us um, actually do uh, better or worse in this particular campaign? Is there something we should replicate or take from other campaigns to make sure that we're um, moving forward and in increasing this number? And finally, the uh, funnel reports, which is my personal favorite, um, not because these colors are so beautiful, but because the story that you can tell is uh, pretty compelling. Um, so in this case, we're just looking at anonymous visitors down to to one opportunities. These stages could be completely different for you and what your actual customer journey happens to be. Um, but what we're doing here is tracking both the volume and velocity with which people are moving through these stages. So we can see, uh, it, let's say this converted to known visitors, um, to new leads, 8.1 days. That's a long time for somebody who's become a known vi visitor to become a qualified lead. So one of the things that we actually did was we had a, an immediate alert sent to one of our sales development reps to reach out and qualify that, that lead or that, that visitor as a lead. Um, one day later, we sent a personalized email with content recommended uh, based on their behavior uh, to help try to qualify that, that record. And then two days after that, there was a, a task set in CRM to the owner of the record to actually follow up and qualify that, that actual lead as a qualified lead. And we were able to cut down that time frame from 8.1 days to 3.2 days. So you can see the significant impact, even though the, the numbers increased, um, they didn't increase you know, significantly to where you, you can say, oh my, my goodness, there's, there's so much, but that velocity is a key metric that we're seeing here. Um, and this is something that helps you to tell the narrative of what's happening in your marketing tactics without needing to bring every single marketing report that you you may have uh, across what you're doing. So um, let, let's all be honest in an executive meeting. It, once you start talking about email click through rates, um, nobody's listening anymore. So um, this, this is a good report to help you talk to those things uh, that are all hard work that you're doing, uh, but at a, a level that is going to be compelling for most executive listeners. Now we do have a question here about where is the financial information coming from? Um, it is coming from the CRM syncs with our, our native CRM integration. So uh, Sugar, uh, Cell, Zendesk Cell, Dynamics, NetSuite, and uh, Salesforce, all of those uh, connect and we can bring that opportunity information in and leverage that for this reporting. Now with that, I will go ahead and uh, stop my sharing here. And we can open it up to more Q&A and I'll uh, start my video so you guys can see my giant head. <laughs> yeah, so we did get a couple of questions come in. Um, Michelle wants to know a little bit about how the relationship with Salesforce works. Is it bi-directional in that contact detail or preferences updates sync both to and from the CRM and how much of the user analytics can be shared into contact or lead records? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it is a bi-directional sync. You have control over what data will sync between any of the CRMs, including Salesforce um, and Acton. So um, you can say, hey, we wanna share this much with Acton from the CRM. It doesn't have to be everything that's in the CRM. Um, it could be a, a certain portion. You can restrict what Acton has. Um, and you can also limit what goes over to the CRM from Acton. So a lot of our customers are doing um, qualification inside of Acton before they actually push um, the message over uh, or the, the record over to, to CRM um, to keep the CRM as clean as possible. So um, you have as much as you, you want with uh, Salesforce. You, you also have the ability to work with Salesforce reports, which opens things up. We can tie into and a lot of the, the, the CRMs that we have the opportunity level sort of data and it, it's named something different in each of the CRMs, the account level data. And again, there's there's different naming conventions that, that come in, uh, but anything on those objects or entities um, or modules, uh, depending on the CRM, uh, you can pick and choose. Um, and that will include both the standard fields and the custom fields uh, from those, those CRMs. Great. Um, and then we had a couple questions actually come in about adaptive sending. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a recommendation for a minimum time period? And then another question was, 
if you're sending all in one day, what's the minimum um, amount of time that would make it helpful? So it, with Adaptive Send, you're not choosing an hour range uh, because we're going to be picking the hour range on there. So the minimum that you can choose is one day. Um, and basically anyone in that audience will pick the best hour that day for them. If they don't have enough data to identify that they're most engaged, then we can actually send out the, the message um, as an A-B test uh, across the time frame. Um, so it really depends on how quickly you need to get the message out. Um, we do offer adaptive send for sales users to send as well. So um, in, in that case, I would choose the the one day as the option there. Uh, for marketers, it really, a, again, the longer you have as far as the time frame, um, probably the better engagement you're going to have. Um, so if you have a message that isn't necessarily time constrained, um, pick a couple of days, two, two to three days is probably a good sweet spot. You cannot go more than seven days um, on the, the adaptive send because it is based on day of the week um, there. So once you go beyond that seven days, it, I mean, we'll, we'll pick the first day. So nothing would, ha would happen after that. Um, so um, I, I would keep that in mind as you're going through, is my message actually time dependent? Um, and you know, how big is the audience that I'm sending to? Um, more questions about adaptive send. It's a very hot topic. Um, how long does adaptive sending need to select an optimal, opt, optimal time to send? Uh, we will use A-B testing until we get 100 touch points from an individual. Um, so it does need some time to, to capture that, that behavior, to have an actual uh, statistical um, statistical. Uh, significance um, as as you're working through, but um, yeah, and I, I see a, a question or a, a comment here about uh, three day to seven days. Absolutely, the longer you have, the the better results you could have um, with that um, as well. But um, the more data you have on individuals, uh, the better you'll get. And again, if we don't have enough data, we will do an A/B test. Right, and that's a good segue uh, to Mark's question. Um, if he's uploading a CSV of fresh leads, does act on remember contacts from previous uploads? Yes. Yeah. So we have a beyond the lists, we have a behavioral database that is email um, as a significant as a unique identifier. Um, so as long as that person has been identified previously, all of that behavior will still be maintained inside of Act On. Awesome. Um, also, does Acton have its own text sending platform um, or does it need to integrate with another SMS program? And if it has its own, can it send short code five to six digit numbers? Yeah, so we do have um, SMS embedded into the platform. We can do five to six character short codes or the, the, uh, the 10 digit. Um, um, what we have seen is um, short codes take a long time um, to get approved. Um, and so with the 10 DLC um, legislation that's come out there, it's easier to get trusted 10 digit uh, long codes um, for your, your SMS messaging. And so that's what a majority of customers with not an obscene volume of, of SMS are doing. So if you don't have a ton of volume with SMS, uh, a short code typically doesn't make enough sense, uh, but that 10-digit that long code, uh, you get similar results uh, from a short code, uh, from the 10-digit as the, the, the short code because you are uh, basically acknowledging and um, following compliance laws. There's a lot more that goes into it, and we do have some uh, really good documentation, both on Adaptive Send um, and on uh, text messaging in uh, Act On Connect, which is connect.act-on.com. And everyone has access. You don't have to be a customer. Yeah, and to add on to Andy's comments, if you guys can hear me, um, but our, act, our SMS is native and fully integrated into Act On, so you can actually build it into an automated program. So Definitely worth a deeper look. Great. Um, well, we are at time. Um, so if there are no more questions, I think we can go ahead and end there. Um, actually, there is one more question. <laughs> uh, dare I mention GDPR? 
<laughs> How does your system cover this aspect of things? Yeah, we, we are uh, very aware of GDPR. Um, we do have a, a whole hub on GDPR compliance. So Acton has uh, tools to help you manage your, your consent capture um, to uh, erase contacts if necessary. So um, we are very embedded uh, to help you be GDPR compliant. We can also incorporate our tracking into your uh, GDPR um, or consent tracking that you may already have. So you're not adding another layer of consent that you have to capture for Act On. You can include us in the consent that you're already capturing um, as, as you're tracking. But Act On is ISO 27001 certified. Uh, we just became HIPAA certified. So there, we're very uh, in tune with the compliance and security uh, privacy shift um, that's happening in, in marketing, especially. Um, so uh, if you do have more questions on that, again, Act on Connect is a, a great resource, but um, we can also have a conversation uh, with uh, with one of our uh, solutions consultants to, to dive into uh, more depth on that or even get one of our compliance representatives in. Great questions. Well, thanks everybody for the great questions. Uh, just a quick close on, on the webinar. Hopefully you can hear me. Apologies for the bad internet connection. Uh, Got to work on that. Uh, but just a real quick recap on, on what makes Acton unique. You know, marketing automation is the only thing we focused on, unlike a lot of our competitors, which are one product out of a massive portfolio of different acquired products. This is the only thing we focus on. This is the only thing we focus on with our services, our product, and our sales and marketing teams. And, uh, and we're really excited to be working with customers who value that type of service. And we've got a fantastic customer support team. In fact, we've got the best reputation in the industry. And we're, we'd be delighted to uh, you know, have the chance to work with you all in solving your marketing automation needs, whether you're new to marketing automation or you've been doing it a long time and you're currently unhappy with your current vendor. And that's it for me, Kelsey. And okay. Amazing. Um, well, thank you everyone for all the great questions and for your time today. I hope you found it valuable. Um, there will also be a survey at the end of this, so please stick around if you have a chance. Um, but please, everyone, give a big thank you to Bob and Andy for walking us through the platform. Um, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.